All kinds of stuff. Julia says she writes nonfiction and she's not sure if they are book club material. Well, I'm going to tell you that there's a book club for every type of book. Just recently, one of my authors, Angela, um, who wrote a nonfiction book for women who are CEOs. Uh, it's a leadership type book, Woman on, Bo Woman on Top. Uh, she was just picked up by the Wells Fargo Book Club. So a lot of industry organizations, a lot of um, industries have book clubs for their employees and, um, and will use that. So um, now whether or not your book is for book clubs or not is a different story, but there are definitely nonfiction book clubs out there. Um, the Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club. Very cool, Joe. All righty. So we have a wide variety of people in here. We are going to go ahead and get started now. And I want to make sure everybody knows there is a Q&A box. Um, you're, uh, feel free to use the chat and, you know, provide feedback, you know, chat with each other, whatever you want to do. But if you have a specific question, I would ask you to put it into the Q&A box that keeps them um, organized. And then I can find them when we get to the Q&A section and, um, and it'll help us not miss anybody's questions. So I'm really happy to have you all here today. This is a really fun um, interview topic, I think. One, because I love book clubs. Um, mostly I love going and drinking wine as we talk about books, but I love book clubs. I love reading for book clubs. And I think the book clubs are such a smart marketing tool for all authors, but especially for newer and budding authors, because it really gives you the opportunity to um, get in front of readers and, and them get to know you better. And as Casey's going to tell us, like she gets pretty personally engaged with her book clubs. So that's really cool. Let me tell you who Casey is. Uh, why is this? I lost the uh, <laughs> return to product information. Excuse me. I'm using her. We decided her most up-to-date bio was on her Amazon author page. So <laughs> I'm going over there. All right. So we have Dr. Casey Whitener writes, Gen X fiction at her core is fantasy romance and not quite getting over the 90s. She serves on the board of directors for the South Carolina Writers Association and is a member of the South Carolina Council on Humanities Speakers Bureau. Dr. Whitener has presented workshops for the Bowling Green State University's Winter Wheat Literary Festival, the Pat Conroy Literary Center, the Fairfax County Public and the Fairfax County Public Library. Her short story, Cover Up, won the Carrie McRae Prize in 2016, and other stories have appeared in Spry, Kairos, and the Pettigrew Review. She is founder and president of Clemson Road Creative and a lecturer at the Darla Moore School of Business, whoop whoop, at the University of South Carolina, even though she is a undergraduate of the Clemson Tigers, that's okay. <laughs> Um, and she is uh, recently uh, published her first fiction book, a Gen X fiction called After December, which if uh, is, well, I'll read you the quick description because it's a, a fantastic book, literary fiction. Um, Tony is dead. He killed himself Monday night, 3,000 miles away. Brian Listo is, whoops, sorry, punctuation there, 3,000 miles away. <laughs> Brian Listo is going home. Five days, four best friends who don't forgive him. Three women who can't stand him. Two parents who don't trust him. One unforgivable sin he can't hide from anymore. Brian is back in Virginia despite the craters he left at New Year's. Back to eat crow, to beg forgiveness, to explain himself to anyone who will listen, except for the one person who can no longer hear him. Growing up, Tony always covered for Brian, made even his most heinous sins seem like minor infractions. But without Tony to play defense, Brian must learn to apologize. It's time to come clean. Can he earn forgiveness? Does he deserve it? Or does he just need a clean break? So it's a great book if you like books about friendship and the 90s and Generation X and fiction and women's fiction and all of those and uh, forgiveness and all of those types of storylines you are going to really like this book. And I'm going to pop the link to Amazon in it. There's her beautiful cover. So welcome, Casey. That's probably the longest introduction I have ever given anybody in it. <laughs> well, it's easier than you just being like, here's my buddy, Casey. We walk together every morning. Go. <laughs> right. And oh, by the way, yes, we are in real life friends and we do walk together every morning. So And neighbors, yeah. That's, that's exactly right. So, okay. Well, 
well, let's get started here. Um, I hadn't really thought beyond being a reader in book clubs, I hadn't really thought that much about utilizing book clubs because I don't traditionally work with fiction authors and kind of to the point that um, Julia made at the beginning here, most of nonfiction books aren't great picks for book clubs, but I love being a reader in a book club and I love seeing what you're doing with the book clubs. So let's tell us about your book club experience. Yeah, so I, I got started with book clubs when we moved to uh, Columbia from the upstate and I knew I wanted to, I needed to make some friends, right? I didn't know anybody here. I needed to make some friends. And so I got into a book club. Uh, one gal that uh, had gone to high school with my husband invited me to be part of her book club. And then I also joined the library book club as well. And I, I primarily joined the library book club because it was my side of town, whereas this other gal was on the other side of the town, right? So now I'm in two book clubs when we first got here. And within a couple of months, I kind of figured out that neither one of these book clubs was for me. Uh, the first one, because they're, they read three John Grisham books in four months. <laughs> three John Grisham books. And basically the way they were going about selecting the book was like whoever's job it was to host for the month would select a book and select the restaurant and everybody would show up. And so when I voiced my concern that they had selected three John Grisham books in four months, one of the John Grisham books being the most recent John Grisham book, which was impossible to get from the library and I didn't have any money, so I couldn't spend, you know, $25 on the hardback version of this. I was like, I, I don't feel okay with the selection process. And the book club, uh, the gal that ran the thing, she, they've been doing it for years. I mean, they, this is like a decade long that they've been doing this book club. And she goes, oh, well, you don't have to read the books. And I'm like, well, then why am I in this club? <laughs> what am I doing here? Why am I driving all the way across town? So um, anyway, so that didn't last. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say it's because they were Gamecock fans, but there were quite a few Gamecock fans. <laughs> uh, I, I was an unwelcome Clemson fan of that book club. Um, but so, so I learned, uh, though, that there are these groups that are getting together. They're using the book club as the excuse. And especially if they've been together for a long time, these are the women that are bringing casseroles when your husband dies. Um, they're, they're watching your kids while you go out of town. I mean, things like that. Like, they've known each other for a really long time. And so understanding if that's the club that you are approaching or that you're going to go and be part of or you're going to be experiencing. Um, that's an important distinction to know. And I, I think they maybe took it for granted that they'd all known each other forever and I didn't know any of them. Um, it, it was hard. But then the library book club did something almost equally uh, challenging for me and that they would pick their books 12 months in advance, which is great. Um, and then we read a book called Unbroken. And this book is so brutal. I don't know if you've read it, but it's so brutal. And I was looking forward to it because it's written by Lil Laura Hillenbrand, who wrote Sea Biscuit. It's a great historical, like a, almost a novelization of, of, of history. It's pretty, it's true, right? Um, and it was just so hard to get through. And when I went in there and I said I had a hard time finishing this book. It was really thick too for a one month selection. Um, everybody was just appalled that I didn't, you know, fall over uh, and, and worship this book unbroken because it was the greatest book that had ever been written. Um, and I realized pretty quickly that when you're part of a book club that is championing sort of high fiction, right? Like um, this is a, an achievement in fiction and you come out and go, I didn't really like that book. Um, Eh, you probably don't really belong there necessarily. So uh, I had to think about what is a library trying to do with their book club and what does that group really look like? And a lot of the reason that those people were there is because Tuesday at 7 p.m. was a good time for them. Mm. And no other, no other reason. Like you can take the book club list and you can just read the books. You don't actually have to meet with the book club to be part of their library book club. But um, they had two meeting times. One was in the morning and one was in the evening. And this group, the evening one just happened to work for them. And so that's an interesting way to get people into a book club is just, you know, it's convenient and it's free. And yeah, it was a, uh... so so I get kicked out of these book clubs. Oh, the third one, I'll have to tell the, the kicked out story. So I, I basically leave these book clubs and, um, and I kind of have a joke about how I, I'm just not good at book clubs and not making a commitment. And so I write this workshop called How to Get Kicked Out of Book Club. Um, or how to read like a writer, which is uh, I'm reading the books that I want to read because they're in my genre. They are uh, the kinds of books that I would market with my own book, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what everybody wants to read. And I'm reading them for a certain kind of experience.
experience and trying to understand a certain thing about these books. And so I have questions about why did the author choose this narrator instead of a different narrator? Um, when we change narrators at the, at the chapter place, right? Like, is this the right time to ditch this narrator and go to the other one? And I wanna talk about the book in that way. Um, but the women that I got together with in my neighborhood, in my third and final book club, they didn't care anything about any of that. They legitimately were there for the wine. And so when I said like, well, why did the narrator, you know, why did they choose this narrator? And I don't know that I agree with the title of this book. It doesn't seem to really tell me anything about the book. They were all like, you're going too deep, Casey. You're going too deep. Um, and that one I legitimately got fired from uh, over a Facebook message. They kicked me out. So, you know, what are you going to do about that? Uh, but anyway, so I understand what the book club is about, why the book club is getting together, who the people in the book club are and what they're looking for, and then go in there and try to create an experience for them where they can read your book and give you um, insight and feedback on that book. And then more than anything, having the book club know who are the people in their group, what kind of stuff do they like to read and help you understand who's in the group and what they like to read um, can be the, the first step in the marketing process. Yeah. So when you published your, your first book after December, and it's funny with your background of book clubs that um, this would be the way that you would want to go, but you had this strategy from, from early on. I mean, you wrote the guide, which I think is something that we need to talk about. If you mm -hmm. want your book to be part of book clubs, you need to make sure that you include a reader's guide or a book club guide or however you want to do it. So let's talk about that first. How did you, but the question I guess I was getting to is being that you didn't have wonderful experiences with book clubs, why did you decide to make this part of your strategy? And then we'll talk about the guide. Yeah, so um, the main reason that I made it part of my strategy is because my uh, beta reader, Jody Kane Smith, who's also my business partner, when she read After December, she was like, this is for us. This is for women like us, women who are our age. So we're in our forties, right? Uh, we have we have children. We have this sort of suburban life that we're living. And what do those women do? Well, a lot of them, my neighbors included, get together for book club. Even if the book is just the excuse to get together to drink, they're still getting together for book club. And so she said, "Where do you find soccer moms, right, on the soccer field? Where do you find these suburban women who are going to have this experience? They're they're going to remember college in the nineties. They're going to remember having the crush on." that boy that just you never could get him to change enough to marry you you know what I mean like he's the boyfriend that like you, you he could have been the one except he just fell short right um, and that's really who Brian is and so she said all these women they're gonna want to know this guy they're gonna want to be in his head they're, they're gonna want this book and so that's really why I went after the book club market was I was thinking okay um, this is a character that that at least the women that we know are um, are interested in Right, the, the the quintessential bad guy from the nineties, right? Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so 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 you made it a part of your strategy. You knew from early on that a book club would be part of it and you made sure to include the reader's guide in there. Yeah. Or for someone who may be um you know, do you have any resources or any suggestions for having, for someone to figure out what to put in their reader's guide, the kinds of questions that you want to ask, especially if you've not been going to a lot of book clubs, if you don't know the kind of questions that they ask? Yeah, well, they're so um, popular now that I would just pull your books off your shelf and see what reader's guides have been done in previous books. So um, one of my favorite books is called The Monsters of Templeton, and there's a great reader's guide in the back of that. So I pulled that one off the shelf and started looking, what kinds of questions did they did they build for the reader's guide for that? Um, Z, the novel of Zelda Fitzgerald, there was a, re a book guide in the back of that too. So if you go to your bookshelves and you pull some of these books off, you'll see reader's guides in the back. Um, and I, so I, there, of course, it's not the same questions, um, but I asked questions about my book that were similar to that. So for example, Monsters of Templeton has um, a variety of narrators. And so one of the questions was about the narrator, right? So the question that I asked about my narrator was, you're in this guy's head for the whole book. Does it get exhausting? Do you wish there were other narrators? Do you wish you heard from somebody else besides just Brian? Mm -hmm. 
go right like and then and then the idea is like okay well are, now the people in the room can say well i don't know maybe it would have been cool to hear from you know tabby's point of view or from joel's point of view um but most people in our in the one session that i sat with uh, one of my book clubs here at lake carolina they all none of them felt um like they wanted it from anybody else's perspective they all felt like brian this was brian's story brian needed to tell the story and they were comfortable with the fact that he was the sole narrator they didn't like him but they were comfortable <laughs> with the fact that he was the sole narrator so, um, and it's also a great opportunity then to ask the kinds of questions that dig out the things that you think about when you're writing your book. You know, you always wonder, for me, I always wonder when I read a book and I walk away from it, I wonder, did I walk away with the, with the, with what the author wanted me to walk away with it? Or did I put my own story into it and walk away with something different? So I would think from the author perspective, it's always also a really good opportunity to ask the questions that make people think about what you wanted them to experience in the book too. Yeah, and to call attention to some of the choices that you made that were deliberate choices. So, and I definitely think this particular conversation works for nonfiction, um, especially if you're writing a memoir where you have chosen the mm. particular pieces that you want to include and you've left out other pieces. Um, if you are making choices about how to tell parts of the story, the book club discussion is a chance for you to, number one, justify those choices, but then number two, help people understand why you made the choice that you did. Um, why did you, if you're writing fiction, why did you include a gay character? Um, why did you uh, let one of the characters parent die, right? Like we have this huge, we, my daughter and I talk about this all the time with the Disney princesses. Why is her mom dead? Like what's, what does that do to the they character? they all are. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Well, except for Moana. Moana's mom is very much alive and active in her life. And so we talked about that when we saw Moana's mom, like, okay. So those are the kinds of choices that the storyteller has made. And you get a chance when you write those book club questions to brag about the fact that you made these choices mm -hmm. and ask them, do you think it was the right choice or and why or why not? Um, um, I have one character in After December who's African American, his name's Chris, and um, the first couple readings of the book, I had, uh, my beta readers told me they didn't know that Chris was was African American, and I was like, okay, how do I put in information about Chris's race without describing him physically necessarily, right, without um, putting a picture in your head of what Chris looks like, I just wanted to make some, con how do people feel about that, and how does he feel about his race, right, so where are the places that I'm going to include that, so that's a question in the book club guide too, did you know no, Chris was black. And if you did or did not, what did you think of the passages where we, we make actual mention of it, where we talk about it? Um, because Chris has been living in Atlanta. He was in Northern Virginia. He moves to Atlanta. And when he comes back to Northern Virginia, he talks about the difference in the way he's perceived in Northern Virginia versus the way he was perceived in Atlanta, simply because of the color of his skin, which is something that had not happened to him before. And that's a real thing. I mean, I have friends that experienced that um, in different regions of the country. So those are the kinds of choices that the author is making that uh, a book club should be talking about, right? They should be digging their teeth into that and going, wow, let's really break that down. Um, I didn't have that experience in the book clubs that I went to, which is why I'm a serial book club dropout, right? I'm looking for somebody to really get deeper into the story. Yeah, well, that brings up a really good uh, point too. And a couple of people, you know, are asking about different genres and how that goes. And, and you stated it very clearly early on is that you have to, when you are from the author perspective, so let's talk about pitching yourself as an author to a book club, you not just as a reader, but as an author, you have to know and understand what that book club is all about. So, you know, you are very passionate about the deeper story within your book and what's happening with Brian and all of the things going on you know so you would want to know if you're going to presenting your book to a book club that all they want to do is drink wine right <laughs> and and that maybe they just want to talk about the sex scenes or something you know <laughs> right and be and be patient with that too because different readers are going to have different levels of engagement with your book too and and i don't think there's anything wrong with the groups that are honestly if you just want to drink wine and buy my book i'm fine with that you don't have to read it <laughs> That's but, okay. I, but I'm saying like, be understand where they're coming from and what they're looking for out of their experience. So somebody asked, how do you find book clubs? And I started with libraries. So I had two different um, paths. The first path was there are these book club conventions and people will actually um, go the book club um, 
owners, I guess, I don't know, the managers, the organizers, whatever they call themselves, they will go to these book club conventions and the conventions are typically hosted by libraries, but the Pat Conroy Literary Center hosted one down in Beaufort several years back. And they went to the South Carolina Humanities Bureau looking for speakers for the book club event. And they found my workshop, which is how to get kicked out of book club. And so they invited me down there. And while I was there, I met a bunch of book club organizers who talked about how they, they're ba basically they're looking for best practices, right? Like um, how frequently should they meet? Um, should they force people to buy the book? How do you feel if people don't finish the book? You know what I mean? Like, should we go on a, on a one genre binge, right? Like we're just going to read fantasy novels for the entire year or something like that. Um, should we move from location, have a different restaurant every time? Should people host it in their home? Like all these different sort of what does it take to run a book club questions, um, right. which I didn't realize people were looking for best practices, but that's really why they go to those conventions. And they also get a chance to be exposed to new authors there as well. So I went to the, I did the Pat Conroy one, and I want to say that was 2017. Um, and then the Fairfax County Public Library saw that I had done the Pat Conroy one and invited me to come do theirs. And Fairfax County, totally, I mean, completely out of nowhere. They, they saw the Pat Conroy thing. They invite me to come and give the same speech. And it turns out Fairfax County is where After December takes place. So I'm, I'm slated to do this and I'm talking to Alexa and I'm saying, hey, isn't it cool? Wouldn't it be cool if I could promote my book in Fairfax County, which is where this takes place? And you're like, yeah, we can have it printed by then. Let's do that. And so we just like, we got it ready um, like a month or two earlier than we expected to because we wanted to be ready to go to Fairfax County Public Library. And I'm going back to Fairfax County to the, to the public library here um, in June. They've invited me back because the how to get kicked out of book club session was so interactive and they really liked it. They had a really good response from it. So they asked me what, what could I teach if I came back? Um, so the library is where it starts, or this organization like Pat Conroy is where it starts. You find them, find out if they're holding book club events, then you go to the book club events and that's how you meet book club organizers. And then start talking to them about your book. Ask them first, what kind of books do they read? How do they select their books? How far in advance do they select their books? This kind of thing. And then you just tell them, hey, by the way, I have a book and I think it might be a good fit for you. Um, and, and that's really how you find them, is going through the big organizations like the libraries. And then there's also Google. Um, you can yeah. Google book clubs. You can, and uh, you know, one thing that I'd like to put out there that I didn't even realize, but a lot of organizations, um, membership type organizations have book clubs and not just like, not just like Wells Fargo example with, for their mm -hmm. professional thing, but I'm a, I was in a sorority in college and um, we found out that our sorority alumni organization has a book club and they have right. a list that they put out. They choose the books far in advance. Actually, they don't choose yeah, they do have a month by month book. So we got together for the first time last month and did one. And then we, as the group decided, do we want to go with their recommendation? Turns out we didn't want to read their recommended book. So we just found one that we wanted to read um, and, and chose that. But so there's that option as a reader. And then I'm patiently waiting the opportunity once I feel like, you know, I can to, to suggest other books into the club that people might want to read, including after December. Um, so, but I think the key takeaway from what Casey just said is you also have to make yourself known even if it's not like blaring through the things, but she took specific steps that put herself in a position that when people were looking for what she had to offer, her stuff was out there. Yeah. So um, if you have a blog, if you have a, you know, if you're involved in any kind of association or a membership organization that you let them know, hey, I'm an author, I have this book, I do this um, seminar, you know, and that's the other thing, like you started doing presentations for book clubs, right? So you started going local. Yeah. So I started where if they selected my book, I would come to their book club. Um, and I have these hand painted wine glasses that I make for the book club organizer who's hosting us in her house. So if she selected my book and brought me over, I bring her this hand painted wine glass that says after December and it has a, um, a butterfly on it. And then um, I spend time with them listening to what they have to say about the book. Now it's interesting to hear how readers respond to your book. And up until the time that you publish it, you want readers to be giving you feedback so you can make the book better but now the book has been published there's nothing you can do about it so as they start you know getting upset with characters or angry about certain scenes or things like that you can't fix that stuff and so it's easy to just go oh okay 
Wow, I'll know that for next time. But there's no reason to get defensive about it because you can't do anything about it. You know what right, I mean? So right. you just kind of go, okay, wow. Um, I don't think if people read my book, they would invite me to their book club if they didn't like the book. So usually the organizer that selects my book will read the book first mm -hmm. and then she'll say, yeah, we'd like to have you come and be part of it. Um, and so before COVID, I was able to go to the neighborhood book club meetings and be in person and drink, drink their wine. <laughs> um, give them a wine glass, you know, uh, and whatever, and hang out with them, and then just answer questions. Um, After December has a, a good many autobiographical elements, so they really enjoy hearing some of the things that are, you know, true, so to speak, um, in After December. And then we had a good discussion around how many authors build off of what they know, how many of them build out of, you know, their true experiences, even if it is a fictionalized version. So that was an interesting conversation. And sadly, book club, it just isn't long enough, you know, I mean, I could have sat there all night talking about my book with people who had read it, some of whom really didn't like it, um, some of whom liked it a good bit. And so, I, and I, both sides, I didn't just want to hear the likes, I wanted to hear the dislikes too and the whys. So um, unfortunately, they're just not long enough. <laughs> well, and for you in particular, like you've got another book coming out that, mm -hmm. that follows on this one. So I'm sure from also from a, from a research perspective, hearing what people liked and didn't like has probably had a tremendous impact on how you're writing after Pittsburgh or before Pittsburgh. Yeah, Before Pittsburgh is very much shaped by my readers, um, which is a good thing because when I first started writing Before Pittsburgh, it was my own need to have to keep Brian in my life, right? To keep talking about Brian and, and keep living with Brian. And it hit a wall where I was like, I don't really know where to go from here. But then after people read After December, the questions that they had about Brian um, and the questions that they had about the relationships that he has uh, really incinerated, you know, in this book um, and how did those things get repaired if they did get repaired, those questions um, all have now fueled what Before Pittsburgh really has become. Yeah, I know we have um, several children's book writers and several nonfiction writers. So I'm going to kick off this answer to this question and then have you fill in anything um, else behind it. But, you know, for fiction, it, it's it, I think there's lots of resources out there. Like Casey said, you go look at somebody else's uh, questions and kind of develop it around the themes that, th you know, all, all that you wanted to know about that. For nonfiction, I think it's really going to depend on the type of book that you're writing. Obviously, if you've written a cookbook, it may not lead to much discussion unless you wanted to have right. a let's get together and cook my recipes kind of thing for, but if you're thinking about a, a self-help book or a book, um, a leadership book, uh, anything like that, that invites discussion. I'm, what were your biases? What were, you know, all those types of things. And then children's books, you're not going to necessarily do, uh, discussion questions, but you can do for, for the reader, right. except for, but you can do like um, companion guides for parents and teachers to give exercises and things for your children to pull out things that they wanted to learn. Oh, the book club at my daughter, we didn't get kicked out of this book club, but my daughter and I were in book club at, um, at our elementary school and they did such a great job. These, um, these parents would come in, we were in for years, um, really up until probably fourth or fifth grade where she stopped wanting to read the books that they had picked. But um, they would do uh, the themed snacks, right? So if popcorn was in the book, we'd have popcorn as a snack, right? And uh, at one point we did a Rumpelstiltskin book. And so we made these little haystacks um, snacks, which was like the haystack snack was a thing that we brought to book club. And, um, and so that was kind of fun. I think with kids books, you can create a menu of mm -hmm. fun snacks that match the book, right? I think uh, certainly the discussion questions in terms of getting into the depth of the book might be a little overkill, but asking just like, what's the motivation for this character? Why does this character do what he does? That's the kind of reading comprehension stuff that kids are being asked by their teachers, mm -hmm. but they don't really know how to answer it, um, or they'll get it on a multiple choice test. And so they just pick the one they think is the best multiple choice instead of really, um, when, so the way Holly and I would do it is I would say to her, like, we would stop in the middle of the book and I go, why is she going to do this? And Holly would say, well, you know, it, you know, remember she had these three things that happened before. So we're just doing a recall right. from what she's already read before we get ready for her, our, our character to make it a particular decision. And I think helping her read that actively that way uh, has really given her a deeper understanding of the story yeah. and how to create stories of her own. It makes my husband crazy because we pause movies in the middle of the movie and I'll be like, why would she do that? <laughs> 
it's also an excellent marketing tool though because if you can show teachers hey if you buy this book i'm going to give you some lesson plans that will reduce your workload <laughs> yeah an and not and not lesson plans in that way of like i'm gonna you know here's your exercise and here's right. your and, and guide it through i mean teach it, but in a way that says like right here maybe even and sometimes publishers will do that they'll put like little light bulb or something right, right? and right. then i give you the co the all the light bulbs right. so here's you know light bulb on page 32 ask this question light oh, bulb on page idea. 56 ask this question right so then you are giving them at least a, a a guide that says here's how to get these kids talking about this book um, I don't know if you did this when you read to your kids elementary school classes but um, I was every time I went in to read to Holly's class so her teacher could have a break I was constantly like before I would turn the page I'd be like what do you think is gonna happen and let everybody in the room pipe up to what they think is going to happen um, and then I go okay let's see you know and turn the page so kids books give you a real opportunity to get the reader engaged and as the book author you want that because until your reader is engaged and cares about your characters I mean you've got something you can sell but it's not it's not an experience that people are having and I think that's the ultimate goal yeah uh, yeah I agree and I mean nonfiction obviously there's a couple people asking on that it's just it's really going to depend on what you're what you're hoping to achieve with your book what you want people to get from it and how people would be able to enjoy that together I guess that process together would be I mean a guidance on how you could do that for is it a leadership book is it a is it a you know thought changing type book is it a self-help you know how are you how are you um, bundling that up there's a couple and of I, people oh go ahead I'm sorry I would just say on the nonfiction side too I would think about um, the experiences that you've had mm -hmm. with the nonfiction books that you've read and the different discussions that have been led around the book so if I mean. I've read um, the highly the seven habits of highly effective people People. My dad had read it too. We sit around talking about how practical is this book? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Right? So if you and somebody else have read that book and you've had a discussion around it, that's really where that, that book guide, right? The book club guide comes up is where do we talk about this? I just read um, a book called Arguing with Zombies and it's by Paul Krugman, who is a um, Nobel laureate economist and he writes for the New York Times. And when I told my, uh, my libertarian friends that I had read this, they all rolled their eyes because he's a big time Democrat. Um, and so, I, and I said to him, I know, I know, but if you're going to read, uh, you know, the opposing viewpoint, read it and understand it and try to figure it out and try to, and try to recognize where there's merit in this argument or that right and so i think that's important too is like wh who are you talking to about this book and then how are they relating to that book and that's where that discussion questions it, i had no trouble coming up with discussion questions because i just want to talk about after december all day long and if it's right. your book as a non-fiction book i don't think you should have any trouble coming up with that like i mean um, you should want to dig more yeah and and, and chew on it more Absolutely. So what, um, in terms of, of using book clubs as a marketing tool, I know you were just really starting to get started with this process before uh, all the COVID-19 start uh, hit. So in terms of like online book clubs, have you participated in any of those? Have you found any of those? What do you, I know some of the library um, organizations have moved to some online type stuff. What's your experience there? Yeah, there's a couple of, um, a couple of good strategies there. The first is Facebook groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups that are book club groups mm. and just about all of them have branded themselves with the words book club on them so if you just spend some time in facebook looking for book clubs um goodreads has a lot of book clubs on there too you can find um, those and then just you know observe them excuse me you can observe them you can um you know maybe send a message to the organizer asking for a brief call like trying to figure out a little bit more but they'll tell you what books they've read and so you can see in those facebook groups and in the uh, goodreads groups what books they've read and so they they may or may not be a right fit for you um and you also can see in some cases with the facebook pages um, and the goodreads you can see who the the members are and you can see what they've also read especially on goodreads you can see they're also reds and so in they're also reds they may not have read anything that's anything near like what you're doing and they just may not be a good fit um, on the professional organizations uh, 
associations like the Association for Talent Development and some other uh, professional organizations have been holding online meetings, Zoom meetings, and that kind of thing. So you really just have to prepare a conversation about your book that can be held in a digital format before you start approaching those particular book clubs. Um, but I would say, yes, I have done some online ones. Uh, the online one, I've done an asynchronous one where they sent me questions and I responded to the questions and they posted them. And then we all went in and just sort of, you know, whenever we could, at, you know, had some more asynchronous discussion. And then I've got a friend in California who's going to have my book as part of his book club. And so we're going to have a Zoom meeting um, in the month that he's, and so they'll all be in the same room. I don't know, they may or may not, depending on if this um, lockdown is still going on, but then we'll all be on Zoom together and talk about the book. And again, it's just like any other Zoom meeting that you've been having. Um, as long as you're willing to make yourself available to them, you know, yeah. a lot of times people are just excited that the author is paying attention to their book club. So um, it can be a great source of not just research for me, but they feel excited to pick your book simply because they get to add that extra piece to their book club experience. Absolutely. Um, I want to highlight something that um, a friend of mine also did with her book. Speaking of a cookbook type thing, hers is actually um, how to prepare meals on a budget and things like that. The, the way that she did it, which I think is a great opportunity for nonfiction books, is that she formed her own paid book club around her book. So basically you buy the book or you pay for the, I can't remember how she set it up, if there was a fee to be in the book club or if you just bought the book or whatever. But basically her book club then was then each week they did, they covered a chapter and did some implementation. So if you're doing a nonfiction that's really like building a skill or teaching something, that's, that's another opportunity that you could do it. You don't even have to go to other book clubs. You build your own book club and for the price of buying your book, then they get this structured, you know, Thing. So there's there's so many opportunities for people to, you know, really get creative. Yeah, I've seen um, cookbook authors that are using their YouTube channel to cook their way through the whole book. Awesome. And so they'll have these different videos that they, I mean, you can't necessarily watch them cook the entire process, but right. they'll cut the video into this is me preparing this meal. And then they'll put that recipe up on their YouTube video. And that's the way that people are able to experience the show me how to do this, not just read your recipe, it, but show me how to do it. So the YouTube channel is really valuable too. I built a YouTube channel for after December and it's right Right now, it's just me talking through the different questions um, in the book club. It's only like little three and five minute videos. So if people want to hear more about After December, aren't sure they want to buy it or they bought it, but they're not sure they want to take it to book club, what would that be like? And it looks just like this. It's me and the camera with better hair um, doing uh, some of these conversations about, um, about the book itself. And then we did some behind the scenes footage um, when we made the book trailer. So I have a video up about that. And then there's a video when I went back to Northern Virginia where I'm walking around some of the the different settings of the book and showing some video of Northern Virginia. So those videos are helpful too. If you don't have a, a YouTube channel to promote your book, you should seriously think about starting one. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. And reading snippets and just doing all kinds of things like that. Um, okay, we've got questions, lots of questions here. Um, where are we? Oh, we're good on time. Did you have anything else that you wanted to state or do you want to get into the, the questions? No, let's okay. do questions. Yeah. All right. So my has, and some of these may be too specific for Casey to answer, but we'll, uh, she's usually got an answer. So <laughs> she is a college professor, so she's good at answering questions. <laughs> okay. My historical fiction novel touches on autism, animal rescue, and is set in World War II. Is it good to search book clubs based on several topics or should I put energy into one book club topic? Um, I like diverse topics. I mean, I, I think it's perfectly great to go with the animal rescue book clubs. Um, anybody that's been reading Mary Alice Monroe uh, is probably an animal rescue type book club. So find the book clubs that read Mary Alice Monroe and you'll find your, your animal rescue people. Um, I, I like to have three or four topics that we can talk about, um, but certainly we're here to talk about the book when I'm there, right? Mm -hmm. So as far as saying you want to talk animal rescue with your book as an example of it, that's the kind of presentation you give at the library where book club organizers may be there. So that's sort of that like, how do you draw people to you? Here's my <clears throat> Here's my topic for anybody, 
but specifically I'm looking for book club people. And then when the book club people bring you in, you get to talk about the book from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea to have topics on multiple subjects that you can present at the library multiple times where you're going to get a bunch of different people interested in what you have to say or webinars. Um, like this is one webinar on book clubs, specifically on marketing your book through book clubs, but I've got dozens of conversations we can have about my book um, and in a bunch of different places all over the internet. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Because of the stay at home time in 2020, what do you think of online virtual book clubs? Is Facebook better than Zoom? So I think we kind of addressed that, but online book clubs are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I would go with Zoom um, only because the interaction is easier um, the, and you can see people on camera. That's, I mean, right now we're in webinar format for Zoom, but if you were joining a book club, everybody would have their camera on. You'd be able to see their faces and stuff. I would go with that. Um, on Facebook, the Facebook Live would be you and whoever the organizer is. So it would look a little bit like this, but you wouldn't necessarily get to see all the other readers' faces. So I might choose Zoom for that. Um, but I do like the Facebook event for continuing chatter about the book because mm -hmm. Every time somebody mentions your book on Facebook, you get to share that, you know, and you get to continue to push that out a little bit more, whereas the Zoom event is sort of self-contained. Yeah, that's a good And I would point. also ask them if it's okay with them if you record that, um, because sometimes they don't want it to be recorded, um, and sometimes they're fine with that. And so if you can record it, and then you can put it sort of in your library that shows people, here's how well I interact at a book club, that's, mm -hmm. that's valuable. But if they don't want to let you record it, then, you know, you're kind of doing the one-on-one -on -one thing, which is fine. Because, I mean, really, even one-on-one, -on -one, you make five ambassadors, you make 10 ambassadors for your book every time you go. I should have mentioned that before. Book club appearances are a great way to increase your email subscriber list because there's not anybody in that room that's not going to subscribe to your email. Everybody will sign up. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I mean, and, and just, I mean, even once we get back into normal world operations, as you spoke of, um, you've got a friend who wants to host you as in his book club in California, where well, you're not going to fly to California to do a book club. Right. So, you know, we're, we're, we're getting the opportunity to test out all these wonderful virtual tools and then <laughs> find right. ways to continue to use them even once, you know, things are back to back to normal again. I mean, my next go, go around after these book clubs, is to go looking for college kids who will do book reports on my book and let me come and speak to their class. I mean, I'd like to have professors that bring me into their English class. You know I mean? They, how do I get my book in the canon where it's required reading for college kids? You know, like right. that's the, it's those kinds of one-on-one -on -one creation. Uh, let me create a relationship with somebody who's going to become an ambassador, a reader who believes in my book, who's going to become an ambassador for me and take my book out there for other people to read um, and to enjoy. They don't have to buy it. Um, I want want them to buy it, right? But they don't have to buy it. They can get it from the library. Just read it and understand it and enjoy it is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's a great question. Then Sandy had asked if you have any tips um, when selling to the book club. Do you have them do you, you have them buy it directly? Do you have them order from Amazon? Do you, how do you work that? Yeah, I usually have them buy directly from um, my outlets right now. So they can go to my website, they can go to Chrysalis Press website, they can go to Amazon and buy it. Like I, I typically prefer them to go through those traditional outlets. I will take books with me if they decide they want another copy. Um, I do have a limited number that I carry around with me, but I would rather not sell them out of my limited supply. Like I'd rather they go and buy through the traditional outlets. That said, I did order because some people want to have their copy signed, right? And so if I'm there, I sign them all, which is what I did when I went to the Lake Carolina Book Club. I get there and I sign all their books for them. Um, but the people like in the San Francisco book club won't have that. And so I bought these labels. My mom called them book plates and they're just stickers. If you think of an eight and a half by 11, it's just a quarter of that, right? So they're about this big. And, um, and I branded them. I put a little butterfly on them and they say they're printed. If you love this book, please go to Amazon and leave a review. But then I, there's plenty of room to write and I can write, you know, Hey Bill, thanks for buying my book. And I cut it off and I send it to him just, you know, with a regular stamp and and he peels it off and sticks it in his copy of After December. So those book plates are a way to get to those people who didn't buy my book um, in front of me that I can't sign their book because we're separate from each other. But here I have this book plate and, um, and I'll just mail it to you and you can, and it's got my signature on it and you can stick it right in front of your book. That's a really good idea. 
Um, Joe is asking if you have any handouts on best practices for book clubs, and I'm not sure if she's talking about, I know she runs a book club, so I'm assuming she's talking about for running a book club, but then I would also say for um, attending a, a book club as the author. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't have any pre-prepared handouts, but I would love to create some and I probably should have. So I'll do that. I'll be glad to um, and send you a PDF file uh, for both uh, the author as presenter, um, but then also for uh, book club uh, organizers. Um, I don't know that I'm the best one to write best practices on organizing a book club, but I'm sure I could find them um, for you. There's a lot of best practices out there that are blogged. Um, the Pat Conroy Literary Center, like I mentioned, um, there's a lot of the book uh, the libraries and things like that. They have a lot of those best practices, but I can help you find some of those resources. But as far as the author going to the book club, I'd be glad to create one that's a, a best practices on that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll make I sure keep getting, I keep getting kicked out. So I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I may not be the best source for best practices. <laughs> okay. Let me just check the chat. Cause I think there were some questions that wound up in the chat. Um, I think we covered how do you find book clubs? Can this work for nonfiction? I feel like we covered that. Do you have any, we talked about online book clubs. Um, okay, but this is a little bit of a different part of the question. Do you have any experience with um, blogs that highlight books for book clubs? Um, I don't, as far as blogs that highlight books for book clubs, that's a pretty use that's a that's a niche right so i don't know of any uh, i know there are some and people blog about absolutely everything so i'm sure there are some um we when we first started marketing after december we went looking for influencers and a lot of times influencers are these bloggers who are reviewing books and making recommendations for books that is absolutely a place that you should be as an author is going around looking for blogger influencers as far as books are concerned um as far as people who blog directly to book club organizers or for book club organizers um, I don't really know. I know that some book clubs, like for example, the Yahweh Sisterhood Book Club has their own website. So sometimes on a website for a, a book club, they'll have a blog and that blog will talk about, will, will give reviews of the different books that they've read for the book club itself. Um, it would be cool if like our uh, South Carolina Writers Association, if we were out there writing reviews and recommending books to people as well. Um, but there's so many places to get book recommendations that I'm not sure, um, how, I don't know, how urgent that would be or how much traffic you would get on that. Um, I would suggest that you create book club a bowl posts for your own blog so that if people decide they're going to uh, use your book for a book club, they can go to your blog and get more information. So I have a lot of blog posts that are um, Brian writing from Brian's perspective, Brian writing about uh, just sort of extras, right? Um, I want it to be the kind of book that when people get done with me, they're not really done with me. They, they want more, they want to read more. And so they go to my blog and they can find more stuff out there. So I would suggest writing that stuff in support of your own book and putting it on your own blog. I'm putting your website into the channel. Oh, okay, that went to everybody. Okay, um, let's see. H how do you find influencers in your topic for nonfiction? Google. <laughs> That's what I thought. Google is almost always my answer. <laughs> yeah, you know what's cool about the blog, though, is the, the blogosphere is that most influencers will link to other influencers. Yep. So if you find sort of the top three or four um, that may not, you know, I'm probably not going to get, uh, I, I think I did try. There's a couple people who write about Generation X all the time, right? And I did reach out to those people and ask them if they would read my book and talk about my book a little bit because they're Gen X journalists, right? Mm -hmm. um, brutally rebuffed by these people, right? Like <laughs> not, they had like zero interest in my unsolicited manuscript, but they are copying people. Um, they are retweeting people. They are following people that are maybe a tier down from them, but still have an interest. So what I would do is go to Twitter and I would look for hashtags that are relevant to your Genre, like your particular topic, find the hashtags for your topic, and then find people who are tweeting consistently with those hashtags. Mm -hmm. And that will be the trail because the people, then you'll see, you know, somebody that's got 10,000 followers that's always using the Gen X hashtag. That's somebody that I want to be reading my book and reviewing my book. Um, somebody that's uh, got, you know, a million followers using the Gen X hashtag. 
mm, they're probably less likely to accept my unsolicited manuscript, right? right? right, right. Um, but figuring out sort of like who those people are that are in the conversation. And in my experience, Twitter is one of the best places to find that conversation. Instagram's getting better at it, but I haven't been able to, and this is probably user error, I haven't been able to figure out how to navigate Instagram with hashtags. Like I, I can see the people I follow and I can see the people that follow them. But like, if I click on the hashtag in somebody's post, it doesn't immediately take me to the whole conversation like it does yeah. in Twitter. Yeah. And so um, I don't think Facebook and LinkedIn and um, Instagram do as good a job linking conversations with hashtags as Twitter, Twitter. does. Yeah. Um, oh, this will depend on, I mean, you can, you can follow hashtags like you can actually um, a search a hashtag on Instagram and choose to follow it. And then those show up in your feed. So for example, you could do, um, if you were looking specifically for, uh, the influencers who are, who are posting on Instagram, then there's, um, there's the bookstagrammers, I think it is. There's the, um, there's a couple of hashtags and you can look this up on Google, like what hashtags are Instagrammers who are reviewing book, um, using books using, but then specifically for your genre, like generally when we're first starting out, we will literally go to Google and we will say, um, book bloggers on Generation X or book bloggers on, um, you know, we, we, we start on children, children's books or on whatever, you know, your genre is. And we start looking and then I do the same thing. I do podcasts about books on whatever um, Twitter handles about. And I mean, if you can, but to Casey's point for a lot of the social media, if you nail the key hashtags in a genre, then you are going to find the right influencers because anybody who knows how to use social media well and who is trying to build an audience that ha that is using those or talking about those topics is going to be using the, the most trending hashtags. Yeah. Um, and there's some, um, some of these blog platforms like Medium, um, LinkedIn is another one, right, that has a blog platform where people are blogging not on their own websites, but they're putting those blogs on the platform. Uh, they will also use the relevant hashtags yep. uh, to, to join the conversation around things like autism uh, or, you know, Generation X, things like that. Yeah, perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to post the link to her book just one more time. If you enjoy books for um, for gener about Generation X, about friendship, about forgiveness, about uh, complicated relationships, about healing after the loss of a close friend, like there's so much in this. It's a, it's really about Brian and his journey to be accepted. It's only five days. <laughs> it's not. It's not really his journey. It's only five days. <laughs> it's only five we're days. Gonna, but we're gonna get Brian in the, five days. <laughs> it does. Yeah, but we, we we get Brian at the worst five days of his life. I it's mean, it's true. We're watching somebody really hit rock bottom, um, and and not in the way of like, um, you know some traditional rock bottom financial, you know, things kind of, thing. but from an emotional perspective, here's this kid who's 22 years old, who's never really had to experience this kind of adversity before. Um, and so, yeah, that's the worst five days of his life after December. Well, thank you so much. This has been um, a really great conversation. I think um, that book Thanks. clubs and everything that happens in this, just this whole conversation of getting your book in front of people who want to talk about books like your book is just something that authors really, really need to be doing as you're building your platform, as you're building your, your true fans, uh, you know, creating that buzz, like that's, what's going to get you more book sales is more people talking about your book. So any final thoughts you'd like to share? I mean, I would just say the more that you are out there talking about issues related to your book, instead of talking directly about your book, that's how you get people interested. Yeah. Um, instead of telling them, here's my book and here's the story, it's been, oh, suicide. Okay, well, yeah, let's talk about suicide. And what does that do to the people who are left behind? Oh, by the way, I wrote a book about suicide. Yeah. Um, and so I think that a lot of times the marketing is more on the uh, maybe it's sub to the book itself. I'm not necessarily talking about the book. I'm talking about the topics. Um, right. And if you're uncomfortable with talking about the topic itself, right? So something like suicide, um, talk about the choice that you made as a writer. So the first person narrator, somebody that people don't like, what is it like to write about from a first, first person narrator that people don't like? Um, but find the thing that you can discuss that doesn't sound like 
pushing your book over and over and over again. Um, and that's going to get you invited to a lot more conversations, even book club conversations. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, yeah, this has been wonderful. Thank you. If anybody has any further questions, um, we'll make sure that you have Casey's contact information and everything. Um, and go get your copy of After December.